Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Sagittarius New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. Through this work, we continue our collective effort to meditatively support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Today, in the cycle of Sagittarius, we will focus on the goal 15, life on land. Our meditation work through the new moon webinars focusing on the United States is one of the and strengthening a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity and the planet. Our goal is to visualize thought forms that help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Thank you for joining us. In the naming circle, we unite our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work, together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field, allowing it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So we will begin with our presenters and I will say your name. You'll have 10 seconds to respond. Please unmute yourself and say your full name calling in from. So Dot Maver calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Daniela. Daniela Nestorovic, greetings everyone. I am calling in from Brussels, Belgium, Europe. Welcome, Daniela. Rebecca? Hello, everyone. It's Rebecca here from Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Tanya? Hello, everybody. This is Tanya Belfort from Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Welcome, Tanya. Stacia. We'll come back to Stacia. Uh, Alexander. Jeff oh. from Phoenix, okay. Arizona. Please say that again for us. Hello, this is Stacia from Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome, Stacia. Alexander. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander. I'm calling from New York city in the united states welcome alexander darcy please unmute yourself darcy <clears throat> well here she comes welcome darcy ah. go ahead Darcy? Washington, D.C., United States. Welcome, Darcy. Galina. Um, sorry, uh, that allowed me a little bit more time to unmute people. Okay. Galina. Welcome, Galena. Jillian. Hello, I'm Jillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Jillian. Thank you. Jeff. Good afternoon, everyone. Jeff from Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome, Jeff. Welcome, Jeff. 
John. John. I didn't know they were going down the list. Yes, we're going down the list of attendees now. <clears throat> John Horan. Welcome, John. Josette. Hello, everyone. I am Josette. I am calling from French. Welcome, Josette. Karen. This is Karen Gendron calling from South Oregon, USA. Welcome, Karen. Luciano. Hello, everybody. I'm Luciano Araujo from Sao Paulo, talking from Brazil. Welcome, Luciano. Lynn. I'm Arizona, USA. Welcome, Lynn. Margo. Hello, everyone. This is Margo calling in from Victoria, BC, Canada. Welcome, Margo. Maria. Hello, everyone. This is Maria from New York, USA. Welcome, Maria. Mary. Mary, are you there? Welcome, Mary. Michael. Hello. This is Michael speaking from St. Savard, Canada. Welcome, Michael. Nick. Nick, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Nick. Olga. Hello, everyone. I'm Olga calling from St. Petersburg, Russia. Welcome, Olga. Hi. Richard. Hi. Richard. Good morning, everyone. Richard Hood from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Welcome, Richard. Roswita. Please unmute yourself, Roswita. Welcome, Roswita. Wendy. Hello, everyone. Wendy calling in from Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Wendy. And Dot, there were Hi. some people up on the A's that actually got missed out um, right up at the top. Ama. Hello, it's Amma Joy here calling from Mullumbimby, Australia. Mm, welcome, Amma. Annette. This is Annette Lüffler from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Asha. Um, greetings, this is Asha Rani from Princeton, New Jersey. 
Welcome, Asha. Brigitte. Hello, everyone. This is Bridget calling from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Bridget. Carl. Welcome, Carl. Back to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Dot. Thank you, everyone. So, um, we had some slides. Um, are you able to open those, Sasha? Oops. Uh, yes, I will show the slides now at the um, moment. Yeah, or, or Stacia, yeah, I, I don't know what you worked out, but, um, <laughs> or I can show them, but it's probably best if you do, Sasha. I think. So we'll, we'll just, while we work this out, we'll just hold the alignment together um, and continue that alignment as we've heard all each other's voices and places across the whole globe where everyone is. And we'll tune in to the Sagittarian influence that we're working within following. We've moved through the Sagittarian new moon now um, and we're on the upswing to the full moon and the sign of Sagittarius. So we... Um, Rebecca, I, I cannot locate the slide, uh, the right slide at the moment. Probably we can proceed right. unless you can show it on your screen. Okay, yep, all right. So let's, um, can we can we share my screen then? Yes. Uh, screen. There we go. We can see it now, thank you. Great, great. So, so we, we come into stillness under the sign of Sagittarius. And we connect with the quality of the second ray, which combines the two great cosmic principles of love and wisdom. The second ray is brought to us by Jupiter, which is the, or who is the orthodox ruler of Sagittarius. And we open ourselves to the presence of this quality within our shared etheric field, sensing the unifying, inclusive, attractive and cohesive qualities of this ray the ray that governs our whole solar system, providing every opportunity and situation needed for the unfoldment of consciousness through the interplay of the pairs of opposites. We immerse ourselves intentionally and together in this dual energy, love expressed through wisdom. And we connect with the quality of active intelligence. The personality ray of our planetary logos, conditioning every cell and atom of the planetary body, brought to us at this time by the earth as the esoteric ruler of Sagittarius. And we sense ourselves as part of the greater planetary body, 
as we participate in the processes of individual and planetary personality integration. We recognise the attributes of adaptability and discrimination, expressing through humanity's vital discriminating and intellectual interest in all types of phenomena, manifesting in the tremendous activity of our times. These are the experiments and experiences from which we develop our understanding and our values. And we come into gratitude for the gifts of this ray which bestow the potential for liberation through free choice using the application of our thinking power. Sagittarian arrows of thought which separate the air enabling us to discern the unreal from the real, to dispel the glamours which obscure our vision of our higher goals. And we connect with the qualities of devotion and idealism channeled through Mars, the hierarchical ruler of Sagittarius. Devotion and idealism playing on the fourth creative hierarchy, which is the human kingdom as a whole. We recognise that the forces of conflict are powerful in this sign, as the forceful dynamic energy of the planet Mars brings the entire human family under the law of strife, based upon this sixth ray devotion to an ideal, high or low as DK tells us in Esoteric Astrology. And we attune to the duality of this sign and we see the man and the horse. We see man as centaur, personality fused with the desire nature, half animal, half man, aiming his arrows of ambition towards human objectives of personality satisfaction entrapped in selfishness and identification. Then we feel the conflict between the lower and higher natures. We feel the separation between the archer and the horse which occurs as the astral nature is tamed. The mists of glamour begin to dissolve away the arrows of aspiration fly swiftly towards their target. This is humanity's struggle, expressed through SDG 15, to care for the earth wisely or to exploit it for selfish ends. The fight between the glamour of materialism and the inclusive love that recognises the spirit in all. It is Hercules crossing the marshes of mind and emotion, flushing out the destructive Stymphalian birds with the clanging of the symbols of Athena and bringing them down with the precisely aimed arrows of right thought so that the silence of receptivity to higher goals can settle down upon the land. Over to you, Stacia. Thank you. Sagittarius energy inspires human beings to strive to leave their animal nature behind, to silence the lower separative nature and direct ourselves to the higher goal of life on land by promoting, protecting, and restoring life on earth. Goal 15 focuses specifically on managing forests sustainably, restoring degraded lands, and successfully combating desertification, reducing degraded natural habitats, and ending biodiversity loss. Here we'll discuss just a few positive initiatives for meeting the goals. First, a World Wildlife Fund, where 78% of the fund spending goes to charitable activities and only 22% goes towards fundraising. 
and also the WWF supports forests with the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC, and you can look for the logo below on products you purchase. Um, I don't know if it's possible to play this YouTube. We can try. Not. Okay. We can try. Um, oh, to continue, yes. We'll see how we go. My computer's a bit, <laughs> bit slow. Uh, that that's okay. If not, yeah, it, it seems like um, I'll give it one more go and see if it'll do it. No, it's going to do the whole thing. Um, we'll just let it go. Okay. Oh. Yeah, otherwise I'm going to have to download an app and I don't know. Let's go to the next slide. Sorry, Stacia. No worries. The Interfaith Rainforest Initiative with 900 religious leaders from 120 countries representing 1 billion people have endorsed the Faiths for Forest campaign launched on September 22nd as a contribution to the UN Secretary General's Climate Action Summit kicking off a global faith-based movement of mobilization, education, and advocacy around halting and reversing tropical deforestation. The Interfaith Rainforest Initiative is committed to raising awareness about the deforestation crisis within communities, places of worship, and congregations as an expression of care for the earth and to advance religious teachings and education that reflects a moral commitment to protect rainforests. Next slide. Julian Lennon was a White Feather Foundation whose mission is the conservation of life by embracing environmental and humanitarian issues and in conjunction with partners from around the world help to raise funds for the betterment of life. I just would like to add a little um, story of how it was found. Uh, John Lennon once told his son Julian that should he pass away, if there were some way of letting Julian know he was going to be okay, that we were all going to be okay, the message would come to Julian in the form of a white feather. Then some years later, when Julian was on tour with the album Photograph Smile in Australia, Julian was presented with a white feather by an Aboriginal tribal leader from the Mernon people, which simply took Julian's breath away. And hence, Julian Lennon stated in 2009, the White Feather Foundation was created for the purpose of giving a voice and support to those who cannot be heard. The tribal leaders asked for my help and I could bring awareness to their plight and to others who were suffering the same. Having had the white feather bestowed upon me, I knew this endeavor was to be part of my destiny. One thing for sure is that the white feather has always represented peace to me as well as communication. The Rainforest Foundation is a charitable fund dedicated to the preservation of the rainforest by defending the rights of the indigenous people living there by supplying legal and technical support so that indigenous communities have the information needed to make decisions and influence public policy. Building networks of indigenous technical experts who manage and analyze satellite data, monitor the forests and take action to keep illegal loggers, miners and traffickers off their ancestral lands. By supporting leaders and indigenous institutions, the cornerstone of effective advocacy and community-based conservation. And last, provide on-the-ground equipment and training to partners so they can use smartphone, drone, and satellite technology in defense of their land. And then the next slide, when you're showing the <coughs> Dubai, uh, the Expo 2020 Dubai is an example of Expo 2020 initiative is the process to conserve and protect biodiversity and ecology within the Expo construction site. Expo's 
eco-conservation targets mandate no harm to any fauna or flora. And I highly recommend everyone go check out the site. You can, I would point out with my cursor where the sustainability pavilion is. Uh, is it that? Yes. It's very good. <laughs> And 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 to I go, can share the, the link to the, this video on this um, control panel. Uh, so you can watch it. Well, unless you want me to show it right now, uh, that oh, now possible. would be good. Okay, yeah. so bear with me a second. Thank you, Alexander, and over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Stacia and Sasha. <laughs> our, um, um, working with the technology. <laughs> so these are practical initiatives presented by Stacia show a tiny sample of the huge richness of human action that's manifesting in projects that seek <coughs> to protect and restore Earth's nature kingdoms and the land itself around this goal and their attempts to come into sensitive, intelligent relationship with our planet and her resources. Taken together, the myriad of efforts that support this goal reflect the visionary scope of the SDGs, which are, as Martha Gallagher says, the greatest global intercooperative campaign ever tried. So, if we have a look at um, how the progress to this goal is going, though, um, we can see the red areas are moving away from the target. So, actually, not moving closer to the target. And then the orange areas um, are limited progress and the green areas are where we're going well. So, um, and then this little yellow area, fair progress, but acceleration is needed. So um, we can see that our arrows for this goal are currently falling short of the targets. And so we have to ask, what more is needed of us? So as disciples, we are asked to continually lift up our perspective. Through discrimination, that Sagittarian quality, we strive to recognise what's materialistic within the goals. And then to sense how we can sharpen the alignment to sharpen that alignment with the higher purpose. And we aspire to raise the vibration of the goals and to infuse them with the love which will magnetise humanity towards them in goodwill. And we endeavour to action this aspiration through our thinking power and our meditation and our service work. And DK tells us the fourth creative hierarchy, the human kingdom, is the agent through which eventually the energies of Shambhala and of the hierarchy will be focused for the redeeming of the life 
of all the subhuman kingdoms. This can only take place when humanity can work with the focused will engendered by the life of Shambhala, inspired by love, fostered by the hierarchy and expressed through the intellect which humanity itself has developed. And this blending of science with spirituality is one area where this convergence of will, love and developed intellect is trying to find expression through both theory and practical experiment. And Tanya is bringing us today some philosophical scientific concepts that have been developed about the interrelation between the nature kingdoms, the physical body of the earth, and human culture and thought. And these concepts offer us a map depicting a co-creative interrelationship between physical, atmospheric, technological and mental globes that surround our planet. So we're going over to you, Tanya. Now, did you want the noosphere diagram first or the slides from the um, video? The diagram okay. first, please. The Rebecca. diagram first. Okay. Yes. So this is a diagram um, I put together with Tanya's guidance because she started, when we were preparing for the webinar, Tanya started explaining to me about the noosphere and I went, wow, this is quite complicated and how do we show this in a simple way so that um, all, all of you can get a quick grip on what it's about. Um, and as we developed the diagram, more and more um, information came in. So I won't go through every piece of information here, um, but just to show you that this idea of the noosphere has been progressively built up by different um, thinkers over the years and starting off with um, Vernadsky and Telia de Chardon, um, they came up with this idea of the noosphere and for Vernadsky it was the, the um, sphere of thought and the human thinking, intuition, higher intuition and pure reason and, <laughs> and we can associate with this with um, you know higher manas that we receive information about in the teachings from Theosophy and DK. Um, Tilliard was a great theologian and or theologian and he um, also came up with this idea of um, the noosphere. So it was a combined um, concept that got built up by Vernadsky and Tilliard. Um, then we had um, Nikola Tesla who came up with this idea of the technosphere, which is this inner um, darker blue ring um, <clears throat> created by all the effects of technology um, and the forces that those technologies are working with. Um, and then the biosphere, this green section was built up. Um, this idea came from James Lovelock, the development, the developer of the theory of Gaia. Um, which is, encompasses the idea that the Earth is a living planet with intelligence and um, sentience and um, so this sphere is about the sentience of our planet um, and, and the biosphere includes all the biological life and life on Earth. And then the geosphere also came from Tilliard de Chardon um, and um, yeah, he, he, he um, focused in on the importance of the energies of the mineral kingdom and the, the way that man was starting to use minerals. So um, Alexander might be able to post this um, a bit later on for us in the chat it's, box. It's, it's already so, in handouts. Already yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> so it's already it's there if you would like. Yeah. Thank you Sasha. And so if you want to look at the details of that a little bit more, um, that's there for you. And Tanya's going to explain it um, much more fully and has much more knowledge about it than I do. So I will pass over to Tanya and I think we need the noosphere slides now, don't we? 
just a clarification that this uh, diagram can be found in the handout section of the control panel, so you can download it from there. And uh, also, Rebecca, question to you and to you, Tanya, the video, that's whenever, if we need to show the Nosphere video, just let me know. Okay. Okay. So I think, so what is, what is a Nosphere? Actually, um, <clears throat> it's very hard to synthesize due to the complexity. I want to call your attention that um, these concepts that Rebecca just presented by Chardin and um, Vernadsky, Vernadsky was considered like the Einstein of Russia, and he created a group called uh, New Scientists, uh, since um, his study group combined spirituality with science, and they considered um, so this living possibility uh, as an expansion of our mind. But there's so much scientific uh, involved in, into this that I decided to start with an introduction that um, is available in a video, a synthesis made by John Birch, who says the only natural and real human unity is the spirit of the earth. Actually, he starts with a quote by Pierre Théa de Chardin. The nosphere can be seen as uh, the sphere of human thoughts, being derived from the Greek word nos, which means mind, in the style of atmosphere or biosphere in the original theory of Vernadsky. The nosphere is a third in a succession of phases of development of the earth. And it, um, while the geosphere consists of an inanimate matter, and the biosphere, of course, is what we understand as the biological life uh, domain. The word is also sometimes used to refer to a transhuman consciousness emerging from the interactions of human minds. So this view predominated in the West, you know, and it was proposed by Théa de Chardin. And um, he had actually a vision during a meditative period of time and uh, took it to the Vatican to share with the Pope, but then uh, he was asked not to publish anything on it because it, we were just going through a lot of turmoil with world wars and so on. So next uh, uh, slide, Théa de Chardin, he became enthralled with the possibilities for humankind, which he saw no sphere as uh, mankind as heading for an exciting convergence of systems, which he called the Omega Point, where the coalescence of consciousness will lead us to a new state of peace and planetary unity. Long before ecology was fashionable, he saw this unity as being based intrinsically upon the spirit of the earth. To this end, he suggested that the earth in its evolutionary unfolding was growing a new organ of consciousness called the nosphere. The nosphere is analogous on a planetary level to the evolution of the cerebral, cerebral cortex in humans. The nosphere is a planetary thinking network, an interlinked system of consciousness and information, a global net of self-awareness with instantaneous feedback and planetary communication. At the time of his writing, computer uh, was any merit uh, the size of a city block. And the internet was, if anything, an element of speculative science fiction. Yet this evolution is indeed coming to pass. And uh, with a rapidity that in Gaia time is but a mere passage in seconds. Next. In these precious moments, the planet is developing her cerebral cortex and emerging into self-conscious awakening. We are indeed approaching the omega point that Théa de Chardin was so excited about. This convergence, however, though it was predicted to occur through a global information network, was not a convergence of merely minds or bodies, but of heart, a point that he made most fervently. He said, it's not our heads or our bodies which we must bring together, 
but our hearts. Humanity is building its compositive brain beneath our eyes. May it not be that tomorrow, through the logical and biological deepening of the movement joined together, it will find its heart without which the ultimate wholeness of its power of unification can never be achieved. Finally, Claude Jardin passed away 14 years before James Lovelock ever proposed the Gaia hypothesis, which suggested that the Earth is actually a living being, a colossal biological supersystem. Yet Chardin's writings clearly reflect the sense of the Earth as having its own autonomous personality and being the prime center and director of our future. A strange attractor, if you will, that will be guiding force for the synthesis of humankind. The Noosphere represents a major evolutionary alteration of human consciousness that is a shift from atomized individual consciousness to the consciousness of a vast single entity, which might be referred to as the collective telepathic field of the earth. And this is a video, Alexander, that you don't have to show it, but you can probably um, share in the chat box or the slides or the video, because I'd like to continue with some more information about the new sphere, since I know it's an issue that um, is generally discussed uh, into scientific um, circles, but I thought it was proper because when we think of the Earth, um, we might have a glimpse of all of those spheres working and exchanging information and in such a way that the human mind is interfering with the climate uh, of the planet and so on. So, uh, before I start with the second part, I'd like to request that uh, we close our eyes for a few seconds, a few moments, and uh, say silently while visualizing the following. I see the greatest light. We may each have seen a different light with a different color or even light in its multiple manifestations as a rainbow. Our objective today, therefore, is to present mainly the two theories about the noosphere. One explained by Chardin, who created the terms alpha point to designate our vision after awakening, and the omega point, which would represent the last frontier of our human minds. And following the scientific research done by Vladimir Vernadsky on this subject. Now we may be asking this question, why are we elaborating on this issue presently in the scope of the FDG 15 Life on Land? Well, first of all, because all of humanity is presently being subjected to immense changes of behavior due to the new technology, which industrialized our foods, medications, supplements, communication systems, and others, thus affecting all of us in the name of progress. Secondly, because the scientific, technological, and modern new ideas also affect the entire planet, all the other realms as well. So life on land as a whole, including all living sentient beings, forests, oceans, rivers, airs, and earth itself. So we intend to review what is earth with a macrocosmic vision, explain them. We have seen already a diagram which synthesized 
but let's review now some of the um, spiritual concepts and scientific concepts as they were brought for the first time to humanity. Uh, no sphere is a planetary sphere of mind or thinking layer of planet Earth. In order to grasp this idea, we must elevate our consciousness and open ourselves to the most general, elemental, and cosmic principles of life on Earth. As the mental sheet of the planet, the noosphere characterizes mind and consciousness as a unitary phenomenon. This means that the quality in nature of our individual and collective thoughts directly affect the noosphere and create the quality of our, of our environment, the biosphere. Thus, the noosphere represents the breakthrough to a new consciousness, a new time, a new reality arising from the biospheric crisis since the biosphere is a unity of all life in its support systems, while the noosphere is a unity of all minds and thinking layers, or as a sum of the mental interactions of all life. Within the noosphere, there exists the evolutionary control panels, known as a place of storage and retrieval system for all the mental programs. Being in the next stage of evolution of the terrestrial biosphere, the noosphere signifies the advent of a qualitative dimensional shift. The passage of transition from one state to another. This was the main investigative topic by Théâtre de Chardin reminding that he was born in May of 1881 and lived until April 1955. Again, more details about his biography. He was a Jesuit priest, Jesuit priest, philosopher, and a paleontologist. Okay, so uh, now I will say a quote by Chardin. The truth is indeed that love is a threshold of another universe beyond the vibrations with which we are familiar. The rainbow-like range of its colors is still in full growth. Now let's hear some more details about the Russian group or the scientific group which actually included participation of um, the main um, scientists in Europe, doctor, led by Dr. Vladimir Vernadsky. So again, uh, the word knows comes from the Greek mind, mini mind, and Vernadsky wrote, the historic process is changing dramatically before our eyes. Mankind taken as a whole is becoming a powerful geological force. Through his scientific point of view, Vernadsky saw the noosphere as a third in a succession of phases of development of the Earth after the biosphere, which consists of the biological life and the geosphere in an inanimate matter. Just as the emergence of life fundamentally transformed the geosphere, the emergency of human cognition fundamentally transforms the biosphere. Vernadsky investigation considered that the noosphere emerged at the point where humankind, through the mastery of nuclear processes, began to create resources through the transmutation of elements. There's also an important scientific project being conducted at the University of Princeton by Dr. Roger Nelson about the global brain that it's really underway. While they are perceived a directionality in evolution 
along an axis of increasing complexity, which we call consciousness, very much in line with the stages explained by the Tibetan in the charts of constitution of men or constitution of the solar system. For him, the noosphere was a sphere of thought encircling the earth that had emerged through the evolution of human consciousness. Therefore, it was part of our human nature, just like the biosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere. As a result, uh, he saw the process of social phenomenon as the culmination and not as the attenuation of the biological phenomenon. However, both are part of the noosphere and include legal, educational, religious, cultural, scientific, industrial, and technological interactions, among others. In this sense, the noosphere now is seen as something that's emerging through and is constituted by the interplay of human minds everywhere. It grows along the organization of the human mass in relation to itself as it populates the earth. They are argued that the noosphere evolves towards an even greater personalization, followed by individuation and then unification of its elements. The Christian principle of love was, according to him, to shut down the principal driver of no genesis. And evolution would culminate in the omega point, which is, uh, may, some may think it's an, an utopian, but we know that it's not. Uh, it's very accessible as well with the new scientific uh, investigations. The omega point then is the apex of thought and consciousness. And he defined this, or clarified, with the eschatological return of Christ. Now, we may ponder, what would be the practical objective for us to study this theme in the scope of the SDG 15? Actually, the practical and primal objective is to develop the awareness that all of us present here now as members of the new group of world servers already are part of the noosphere and its success happens naturally like through this UN SDG meetings or using our own inner capacity to reach and work with a higher monastic or triadal or logoic vehicles, or maybe through inspiration, as it occurred with the other Shada. Or we can also reach through uh, scientific investigation, such was example um, given by the research conducted by the scientist Vladimir Vernadsky. I would like to finish uh, this brief presentation with a final inspiring prayer by if you feel comfortable, you may close your eyes. Since once again, O oh Lord, in the steppes of Asia, I have no bread, no wine, no altar, I will raise myself above those symbols to the pure majesty of reality and I will offer to you, I, your priest, upon the altar of the entire earth, the labor and the suffering of the world. Receive, O oh Lord, in its totality, the host which creation drawn by your magnetism presents to you at the dawn of a new day. This bread, which is our effort, is in itself, I know, nothing but an immense disintegration. In this wine, our anguish, and yet, alas, it's only an evaporating beverage. 
but in the depth of this inchoate mass, you have placed uncertain, for I feel it, an irresistible and holy desire that moves us all, the impious as well as the faithful, to cry out, O oh Lord, make us one. And in Thank that you very one, much. And in that oneness, we visualize our group centers as we take a unified breath and align ourselves within the group field. Our hearts unite across distance and we extend our group light to illuminate and experience the loving heart of Gaia that is ever present in the one life. As a group, we lift our consciousness and we look at Mother Earth, Gaia in all her beauty and with all the present challenges, we see the sustainable development goals, a blueprint that countries have agreed upon through the United Nations. We hold this thought form in the group mind as we focus our attention on goal 15. We attune to the keynote of Sagittarius. In silence, I see the goal and reach the goal and see another. We now turn our meditative focus to the sub goals for SDG 15 Life on Land to conserve and restore terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems. End deforestation and restore degraded forests. And desertification and restore degraded land. Ensure conservation of mountain ecosystems. Protect biodiversity and natural habitats. Promote access to genetic resources and fair sharing of the benefits. Eliminate poaching and trafficking of protected species. Prevent invasive alien species on land and in water ecosystems. Integrate ecosystem and biodiversity in governmental planning. Increase financial resources to conserve and sustainably use ecosystems and biodiversity finance oh, sorry, and biodiversity. Finance and incentivize sustainable forest management. Combat global poaching and trafficking. Okay, let us now enter the power of silence together. As we register our impressions, we see life on land expressing through many initiatives and actions, including World Wildlife Fund, Interfaith Rainforest Initiative, Expo 2020 Dubai, the White Feather Foundation, and the Rainforest Foundation. As we realize the livingness of no one left behind and build our resilience all over the world. Now we anchor the thought form and distribute the energy gathered as we sound the mantra of the new group of world servers. May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all 
seek to aid the great ones. May I fulfill my part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. I believe, believe the floor is open. Yes, thanks, Stacia. As we drink in all of those big ideas, <laughs> um, yeah. If anyone would like to make any comments, has any questions about anything or thoughts. Um, it would be great to hear from you. You can raise your hand. Um, um, or and unmute yourself and speak. Um, Alexander will unmute you or you can type a um, comment in the questions or chat box. A couple hands raised. Um, Thanks, Sasha. John, Gillian, please unmute yourself. Hello, it's John Haran. I wanted to say thank you for the presentation. I'm peripherally familiar with TLR Dushavdan, um, although I haven't encountered his teachings for about 40 years. They've been somewhat out of uh, style, shall we say, with the current administration. I am unfamiliar with Bernatsky and I'm very excited about learning more about him. And I wanted to say thank you for including the scientific perspective in this. It's wonderful to watch the evolution and the understanding of the earth, earth as one conscious entity. I think back to my heroes, the musical heroes, the Moody Blues and their album to our children's children's children which concluded with a song called watching and waiting which is really about the evolution of the earth into a planet with one mind but that was the overarching goal of the group and so i thank you and look forward to any other comments you may have um uh I would like to say something, Rebecca, uh, in response to Julian's uh, comment. Julian, um, both Shada and Vernadsky were prohibited to display or share with the world community their findings. However, um, the scientists continued the investigation until today, and uh, they are so concerned about uh, the contamination of the noosphere by the cybersphere or technosphere that this group called um, New World Spiritual and Ecological Assembly, which has something like uh, 2,000 members and scientists from all over the world, they drew what's called the No Constitution or the Constitution for the Noosphere. And um, 
I had the pleasure to be invited to translate the new constitution uh, into Portuguese. And um, it's actually very, this discussion is really going on strong in, in Europe and, and Russia. Uh, the new constitution was finally approved in the Rio summit, Rio plus 20, in 2012. And subsequent to that, by, by this international committee of countries, you know, who had their representatives there present at Rio Central, uh, and subsequently, the new constitution was submitted for filing uh, at the UN and is available for anyone who is interested in the legal aspects. I'll just mention one of them because it's so interesting. There's an article that um, prohibits humanity from doing any damage um, to any alien that lands on Earth. But thank you for your comments. Yeah, so that, thanks Tanya, that was John and um, Gillian, I think still have your hand raised. Would you like to unmute yourself, Gillian? Hello, um, I haven't actually got my hand raised, but I do have um, one point. Uh, I'm very concerned about pesticides and the fact that we have them thrust upon us by large corporations and the damage they are doing to the ecosystem. And another point on that same subject, uh, we're told not to kill life, but I'm a gardener and uh, I wouldn't use pesticides, but say you've got lilies and you've got loads of lily beetles, what's the best way to deal with a situation like that? Is it okay to kill pests or not? What, what does anyone think? <laughs> that you know that that question you know do is it okay to kill things um i guess we all have to answer these things personally but it resonates um um into out into really big philosophical questions about you know the role of destruction mm. and, um and the tibetan does talk to that um in various places and um, you know he talks about it on very high levels of the destruction of the ideas that create civilization but um, <laughs> it really is true that you know we we do actually have to destroy things sometimes yeah. um, and and then it's how the consciousness that we do that with and um, the way we do it um, and and obviously for you the consciousness is around well I don't want to destroy things in a way that damages the greater whole I just want to um, take care of my lilies <laughs> so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah another I, thing is I suppose that um, apparently all the pests we get are brought on by our faults in the first place so maybe if we're living life as we should be we wouldn't get the pests in the first place <laughs> Yes, well, that that would be, um, and then. But the trouble is, sometimes it takes a while for these mm. things to take effect. So we might be living a very beautiful life on planet, all of us, but it might take a while for the bugs to go away. So, yeah. I, thank I you. Know, maybe some other people have some opinions about this, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm yeah, Rudolf Steiner. Point. Yeah, Rudolf Steiner also had some interesting. Um, techniques for um, um, dispelling um, pests um, so that might be worth mm -hmm. looking into his work but they are quite involved and they do involve the destruction of um, some of the creatures um, and then the creation right. of a, a substance that you can then sprinkle around that will then keep them away but um, yeah <laughs> okay, well. it's a deep question <laughs> yeah There any? Uh, Stacia, yes, please. Yes, I just wanted to add um, to the lady, as far as pests, there is in vibrational healing a stone called sericite that uh, comes out of Morocco um, that supposedly you can put these chunks of sericite in the beds and it will dispel some, you know, kind of chase away the pests. Just a thought. 
Thank you. I think it's a very interesting question about um, the, the past. If we assume this position of a gardener, and uh, the gardener seeks to maintain a balance in the garden and still plays a very effective role in deciding what is the balance. And uh, I really appreciate today's presentation. Uh, it's what Tanya shared with us about Nasir, which places humans into the uh, as integral part of the biosphere, because still the nice noosphere is a part of biosphere. And to think about life on land in connection uh, with the, um, us as part of that balance, it's it's very good concept. And uh, I think if anything we could take from today's uh, sharing is that Separation humans from the biosphere is uh, the, one of the reasons that brought us into the current crisis and the current mess. And that when we think about preserving life on land, we should think about us humans and the role we play in that. And yes, at some point we have responsibility to assume the position of a gardener uh, but the gardener who keeps in mind the focus on the balance and what that balance is this constantly dy dynamic process of maintaining that balance Yeah, it's a really beautiful way of bringing it together and making the meaning. So, Alexander, thank you. Mary posed a question in the uh, uh, chat. Uh, is has anyone looking at the effect of EMF waves and satellites all around the planet on the different levels? If anyone has anything to uh, respond to that. Anya, do you have anything to say about that or that's very much well, part of the Well, I would like to say that uh, yes, definitely. Uh, we already are already aware that we have a lot of trash uh, in the cybersphere, you know, accumulating just like as we have in the bottom of the oceans. But um, then we now get into an era of, era of drones and uh, a lot of other things that are happening backstage that um, since I'm not in the scientific field, uh, um, it's hard to, um, you know, make comments specifically. But uh, for sure, you're right. Uh, satellites are polluting the the technosphere and the noosphere. Hopefully, not yet, but uh, eventually it will. The noosphere is a sphere of the saints, of the bodhisattvas, of the meditators like us. And um, when we go to our personality levels. We realize that our minds are full of fear, are full of anxiety, because uh, although we generally do our meditation on the soul level, we cannot avoid to see reality as it is. So we do become impacted by whatever is coming or is happening all over the world, you know. And the, the process of globalization, actually, according to Jose Arguelles, uh, he, he considers that the mark of when the no sphere started to be hit or influenced by the technosphere, by the cybersphere. So it's very important uh, what um, those guys that work with computer uh, uh, information, artificial intelligence, so on, uh, that this, yes, eventually will affect because we're talking about the mind of men together with the mind of all living beings. And on the consciousness level, however, 
we're the ones that uh, have the final say so. So the more we discuss this, you know, in a global level like we're doing now, and um, and become active, you know, engaged action to share the teachings that we receive daily through our our partners, the spiritual partners, the more we will be helping humanity to finally, you know, say, look, this is a goal, is a survival. So a red red light starts shining in our minds, you know. Look, this is not. We don't have too much time to discuss. We're almost like at a zero point, uh, you know, near extinction. Uh, well, like uh, some say that uh, this is a terrorist uh, speech. Uh, they call the Al Gore a terrorist. But, um, you know, all those climate things that are happening now in, all over the place, they have been um, brought to international conferences 20, 30 years ago, and nothing has been done. And we saw today how some of the targets for um, this particular SDG 15 um, are behind the targets. You know, there are some targets for 2020, there are some targets for 2030. And I also would like to say, like the Amazon forest does not belong only to Brazilians. There are other countries involved in South America, you know, and they feel that they need to, that, that this is um, natural resources are theirs, you know. So they invade the forest, they burn fires, so they need the land, they need to, to do farming there. It's not only a responsibility of Brazil. And I'd like to thank uh, Stacia for presenting um, the positive um, action of the NGOs, you know, in the area, in the whole area, and uh, the world support they were having on this issue. I see that Richard has his hand raised as well. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing back. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that um, just in relationship to the wireless technology and, and things that I think there's uh, two sets of scientists. Um, this group of scientists, and, and I noticed on that diagram, Tesla sort of stated as the father of the wireless technology. There's scientists who have been around um, before the 1800s who were working with nature and working with um, the radiance and wireless technology. And then when you're working with nature, you don't get the byproducts um, of the um, uh, toxicities of, for instance, the electromagnetic fields that things like um, the electricity and what's coming up with the 5G and all the other uh, radiations which the planet and we are exposed to nowadays. So I think it's important to discern between um, the science that works with nature and the science that works against nature. Um, and I think when you really look at it, those scientists which are materialistic and don't take into these uh, into consideration these finer concepts and philosophy like the noosphere and, and the like um, are coming from a materialistic egotistic basis and therefore it casts quite a shadow upon uh, the planet and indeed the solar system and we need to find our way back and listening to great scientists like Tesla, Johann Grander, Victor Schroberger and there are many of them um, Wilhelm Reich, there's, there's lots and I think as a community we need to seek out the science that works with nature and discern it away from the um, materialistic limited science of materialism. Thank you. Annette, mm, Annette, you can mute yourself. Yes, this is Annette. Um, I, uh, uh, when I heard about the noosphere, I thought about uh, the cloud where we can get in contact uh, with uh, all the ideas uh, the hierarchy uh, sends out, uh, all, all the ideas that is to know. And, and I, I 
also thought about um, in esoteric um, healing, um, the Tibetans write that all diseases are results of, of um, feelings, of emotions uh, today, practical, all of them. But later on, it will be um, more and more uh, 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 from thoughts. So I guess uh, when humanity evolves, uh, consciousness uh, in consciousness, um, we shift uh, the problems to higher and higher spheres. Um, so it was just some thoughts I had. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you. There was a comment in the uh, question section of control panel from Luciano from Brazil. Thank you, everyone. Uh, from, and this presentation focuses on balance of Earth. That brings scientific details about the Nosphere and our efforts to sustain and make a shift to higher mind and strengthening the group. Thank you, Luciano. Yes, I, I too, this is Dot, I too want to say thank you uh, for the sharing. And I, I, almost the entire time as the weave was taking place and we were lifted, lifted consistently into the no sphere and the, uh, the mental or mental realm and consciousness and uh, Einstein's words kept coming to mind. We're not going to solve uh, things that are created on one level on that same level. And it really is, uh, it's really touching to see this weave of the scientific, the spiritual, and the, the factuality of all of this. Thank you. This is Annette. I have another comment. Um, I just uh, thought about uh, uh, the Tibetan has um, talked about uh, mass consciousness. It is uh, uh, at the moment uh, very emotional uh, oriented. You can see how fear and anxiety is uh, controlling um, is, uh, the mass consciousness, uh, the opinions in, in elections and so on. And the Tibetan says that later on, the mass consciousness will be elevated to to uh, uh, to thoughts, to, to the mental plane. And, and uh, I hope this is about to shift um, um, soon. So, um, we can get up in in the nose sphere and and get us some more scientific uh, uh, thoughts in 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 the in the um, mass consciousness and in in the uh, uh, communication in in uh, elections and in 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 the papers thank you Uh, Rebecca, mm -hmm. 
I would like to make a final comment for those uh, many of us here together have, are studying the Tibetans' uh, work. And I'd like to suggest that um, when you can, you go back and refer to the Constitution of Man and uh, this diagram that appears in the Treaty of Cosmic Fire, chart eight. And um, we can see that um, actually when we build the Egoic Lotus on the 18th subplane, we can um, already, we are already, you know, after we transcend the three lower vehicles, physical, emotional, and mental, we can start to glimpse naturally during our meditation process what is what's above but then there's a shift which is in the book uh, from intellect to intuition written by bailey uh which says uh, we cannot just stay in the realm of the complex mind we have to access intuition as well you know and inspiration and then uh, the insights and um they all come naturally depending on um, the flow of uh, development of consciousness that we all have you know in our path but uh, actually, then the next uh, stage of after Buddhi, which is intuition in honor of Buddha, um, we reach the monadic level, I mean, the atomic level, uh, the, the understanding of the divine plane, the plan, divine plan starts to, to be also, you know, understood. And uh, Ken Wilber wrote a book on that called The Atman Project. And then we move on with, onwards and uh, on the monadic level which i think that's where we all we already have reached this consciousness level you know then uh, at this higher level of consciousness and then already some of us here maybe i don't know who um we emerging to the logoic level but um then we will be ready to understand to reach this omega point but there's a point the omega point after that uh, the, the consciousness the consciousness continues not not the mind anymore which i mean uh, the right and the left brain they seize you get into a knowledge of emptiness and they start working from then on so this is a, a wonderful study the constitution you know you know i recommend that we always review this diagram thank you thank you tanya You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So it might be time for a closing moment now. Over to you, Dot. Is that? Okay, Alexander, Alexander, did you want to say anything prior to that? I yes. Sorry. Uh, Thank you, Dot, and thank you, Rebecca, and uh, Tanya, and Stacia. It's very inspiring sharing, and the uh, topic invites us for continuous reflection. Thank you. And I want to share with you about our coming webinars. As we continue our work uh, with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in the cycle of Capricorn, we, we invite you to join the reflection on the Goal 17, Partnership for the Goals. And as you know, the next uh, new moon, we already will be working with the energies of the festival week. Uh, known as the festival week of the group impact and so during that time it's all will be about how we can work as one group meditating and the work to be done for the next seven years so uh, on december 28th it will be the last day of the festival week we will come together to focus on the goal 17 and before that, there's still a number of events that uh, we invite you to join. Uh, on December 10th, uh, we invite you to join the webinar, uh, the sixth webinar in the series of Manifestation in the New Civilization. 
and this time it will be the uh, webinar with World Goodwill uh, from the United Kingdom that will be on December 10th and on December 12th we invite you to join the Sagittarius Solar Festival gathering where we will together uh, set our goals for our work during the festival week and uh, so please join uh, for that on December 12th and uh, there will be a number of different events happening during the festival week itself and uh, I invite you to uh, check the festival week bulletin board for uh, the calendar of events the number of events already been submitted there you can get the active link uh, in the chat box of the control panel uh, there will be more events uh, added there in the coming weeks and we invite you and your group to share about the events that you are planning uh, submitting the information about the, uh, your uh, planned work via the festival week bulletin board sharing form the link is also in the chat box of the control panel so that's about our continuous and going work together so let's stay connected and tuned in and thank you very much and over to you dot as we continue our work together and as a group let us remember the power of silence in our united meditations and focused intentions and we take a moment of silence now and we'll close with a single ohm knowing that concentrated silence gathers a special energy which is silence in action Oh. 